Secretary of State Rex Tillerson said the two countries agreed to set up a, quote, working level group to explore cyber issues and election non-interference. Joining me now is Congresswoman Maxine Waters of California. And Congresswoman, I guess, first your response to this idea of a working group between the U.S. Russia to explore uh, election interference or, or, or cybersecurity. Well, you know, I hope uh, that the American people won't fall for that kind of you know, uh, putting together of some kind of commission uh, to deal with, you know, hacking. And that's what, you know, they're describing. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think Americans should be very, very concerned uh, that this president sat down with Putin, who we know hacked into uh, our election system, to the DNC, and to many of the states uh, that are now coming forward uh, with this information, and to sit down with him and not have a real discussion, a real conversation, and delve into our real concerns about this happening and get a commitment uh, from Putin that they would never do it again. Um, Americans want to hear uh, that kind of conversation. Obviously, this president went into the room. Uh, he brought it up because he had to. There was so much pressure leaving, you know, America uh, from the media and everybody else. He could not afford to go into that room and not pretend uh, that he was dealing with the issue. But he really didn't deal with it. He took it up first. Uh, it was dismissed. And Tillerson said it was intractable. Now let's move on. And this thing about a commission and also about, you know, uh, what they're going to do with Syria and having some kind a cessation of, um, of, uh, of the war there. Well, you know, I don't know if Putin uh, is in a position to absolutely negotiate and make all the decisions for Syria. Uh, not that I care about Assad, but uh, I would assume uh, that he would have something to say about it. So I think we're getting played. We're getting played by our president, and certainly we're getting played by Putin. Uh, I don't like the idea that our president, again, would go into a room without any note-takers, without any staff, without others who should be in the room who really understand understand foreign policy and who really understand Putin and come out of it, you know, saying how honored he is, you know, to meet with him and how, in fact, they're going to start working together. This is all about lifting those sanctions. And of course, Tillerson was in the room uh, because that's at the top of his agenda, to lift those sanctions so that they can drill into the well, Arctic. So you have Trump, who's agreeing uh, to lifting the sanctions, and Tillerson with the foreign minister of Russia. Russia, of course, who is supporting whatever Mr. Putin wants to do and whatever his country wants. And so that's what this is all about. Um, uh, the, the previous guest we had, Jonathan Sanders, just saying that he expected those sanctions to be listed in six months. I want to I want to ask you about a, a very strange thing that happened right before the meeting. Out of nowhere, the president uh, issuing this statement. Uh, everyone here is talking about why John Podesta refused to give the DNC server to the FBI and CIA. Disgraceful. Now, there's a, a number of uh, uh, errors there. Uh, John Podesta didn't have control of that server. He wasn't at the DNC. The CIA never requested it. Uh, nevertheless, uh, John Podesta to called into Hardball to respond. I want to play that for you and get your reaction. All right, thank you. I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, I had nothing to do with the DNC. I was the chair of the Clinton campaign. Uh, I was certainly never asked by the FBI, and uh, I don't know anything about what the DNC did, but they've said they fully cooperated with uh, the request that the FBI made. So it is, this guy is unhinged, uh, and I think he's under so much pressure uh, from this Russian investigation uh, that when he's in the corner, all he does is he, he strikes back, and he doesn't care about whether anything is true or not true. What did you make of, of, of that uh, statement from the president? Well, he doesn't know the difference between what Podesta's role was with Clinton and with the DNC. He really doesn't get all of that. Uh, in addition to that, what he thought he was setting up was um, this proof that we have no proof. And that's what Putin has said, and that's what he continues to say. It's almost in your face. Well, you can say what you want, but you don't have any proof. And I think uh, this president, Trump, was playing into that and trying to say, well, you know, they had proof if they wanted to share it, but they wouldn't let us see it, so they must not have any proof. I think that's what it's all about. And he thought, when he did that, that he was nailing Podesta, because Podesta had control of the DNC and the server at the DNC. So we can just dismiss that uh, as another Trump 
uh, not knowing what he's talking about, not knowing what he's doing, and trying to give some cover uh, to Putin. That's what that's all about. Again, people, we must keep our eye on these sanctions. First of all, the United States Senate has passed legislation, very strong legislation on sanctions. We must support that, because Putin didn't just want Trump elected because he didn't like Hillary. It is because he knew that Trump would be a part of helping to lift those sanctions. And I call the Kremlin clan, all of those allies of the president who will benefit from it, who have right. indicated their connections to Russia and to Putin that and to the oligarchs. And so they're trying to play us. Uh, but we should not buy into anything that, that we have heard happened, uh, because we don't really know, and he does not want us to know. He wants us to be in this position where we're trying to figure out what they said, and we can't be sure uh, what they really talked about. But it's not substantive, and we got to keep our eye on sanctions. All eyes are going to be on sanctions, I think, Congressman.